My name is Wendy Patrick, and this devotional is entitled, For God So Loved the World. You're familiar with this verse, no doubt. You know the way it starts. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have eternal life. That's John 3.16. A favorite of Christians and non-Christians alike. But what does the world mean? Why is it called the world and not God so loved some, some subset of the world? Now, our believing and non-believing coworkers have heard about this, but maybe we haven't taken enough time to look at the specific wording. So let's get a better appreciation of exactly why your position in life, at work, in a particular family, in a certain neighborhood, can be an amazing opportunity to expand God's kingdom. Notice the way this verse begins. For God so loved the world that he gave his eternally begotten son. Now how doesn't it begin? It doesn't begin by saying something like God so loved his people or God so loved the chosen ones. It doesn't begin by saying God so loved the church or those that followed his laws. For God so loved those who hath never sinned. No, it doesn't start that way. It starts, for God so loved the world. Now listen to the repetition in the very next verse, which would be John 3, 17, something that's not cited nearly as often. It says, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Pretty obvious, huh? A lot of repetition of the words, the world. Again, it doesn't say, for God did not send his son into the synagogues or the holy places to condemn those who did not believe in him so that his chosen people might be saved. It doesn't say anything like that. It says that God sent his son into the world to save the world. This verse is for everyone. Maybe that's one of the reasons why it's so popular. Because I've always thought it's pretty interesting that the world loves John 3.16. Not just Christians. Unbelievers love this verse as well. Even they find it comforting if they haven't done the, the analysis, as maybe you have. Even they find it comforting, as they should. Because when we say God loved the world, how broad is the world? Is everyone included? How about the sexually violent predators? How about the child molesters that I prosecute for a living? How about them? Are they included in the world? How about domestic abusers? or thieves, or you name the category. Does God love them too? Does he love them less? The answer is no, and that is an amazing thought. To God, every life has value. What does scripture tell us happens in heaven when just one soul is saved? Scripture tells us there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. That's the book of Luke, chapter 15, verse 10. Rejoicing in the presence of angels. Can you imagine that? How different our daily lives can be when we remember this. It can change the tenor of our interactions with everyone we encounter, personally and professionally. So we pray together. Lord, thank you for reminding us of your love for the world so that we may heighten our awareness and appreciation for the people you have placed around us. Help us to be more attentive during the day to our surroundings, to the people around us, in order to be a blessing to everyone with whom we interact so that we may be vehicles 
of your grace and your love to them. It is in your name we pray. Amen.